my golden age of Stratomatic. 1977 to 1984. This should be in a blue font, not a red one. And it should be bigger to be consistent with the other the other graphics. So let's make it blue. There you go. 1977-1984. Alright, last we left you. It was the 81-82-83-84 Carryover League. Won by the Cincinnati Reds. These Cincinnati Reds. Or what's left of them. And there's not a lot of good ones left. But we'll get back to the Reds in a little bit. That's not They're not important right now. But they won it last year. And this is a new year. So, something... There was a radical change to this carryover league. The next step, of course, is that you would get rid of the 1981 eight cards. Right? Sorry, Reds. I'll have to scratch you out. And you have 12 cards here. Six from 82, four from 83, and two from 84. Well, the obvious thing that I've been doing is adding the next year, 82 to 85. But like I said in a previous post, previous video, question mark, was I going to use the 1985 season? The answer is no. I decided not to. In 1985, Stratomatic introduced the ballpark single. Actually, excuse me, that's the ballpark home run. The ballpark single. And the clutch hitting of the cards. I didn't want to have cards that had this variable on it and not have it for all, all the players. So what was I going to do? Well, Stratomatic reissued a 1969 and a 1970 season. And by reissue, I mean the original 69 and 70 cards did not have E-ratings. But the reissue set did. And the reissue set in 1969 coincided with Major League Baseball expansion. Major League Baseball expanded into Montreal and to Kansas City and San Diego, Texas, or well, not Texas, I guess, but <clears throat> in any event, there was an expansion and there was an incredible statistics that year. Some of the players who were amazing in 1970 were Frank Howard, Harmon Kilbrew, Willie McCovey, Even in pictures like Juan Marichal. So I decided I would do something radically different. And I would go back into time. And I would continue my league starting in 1969 and take it through the 70s. So this means that in this first season... You're going to have a dozen players from the early 1980s get introduced to a couple guys from 1969. Imagine playing with a guy who's already been inducted into the Hall of Fame. What does that mean for the Cincinnati Reds? Well, I'll tell you what it means. The two players from 1969 who ended up back on the 1980 Reds, who by this period, the Cincinnati Reds in 82, 83, and 84, had already started to be in decline. Welcome back, Pete Rose. He had been in Philadelphia, and he gets to come back home to Cincinnati, but not in his uh, 80s role, where he played first base. Pete hit uh, 348 and played a gold glove caliber right field. And some other guy named Tony Perez, who was playing third base then. 
He wasn't very good at third base. It didn't matter. He hit 294 with 37 home runs. They were added to a Cincinnati team that was in decline. Could they repeat as champions? Well, the answer is no. <laughs> they could not repeat as champions. However, in looking at the stats for the National League, at the top of the batting list, Pete Rose at 427 for me. He led the National League and Major Leagues in hitting. 427 with that card you just saw. So what did happen? Your 1982, 83, 84, 69 world champions The Oakland A's. The Oakland A's defeated the LA Dodgers in the 82, 83, 84, 69 World Series. And this video is going to try and figure out how Oakland was able to do that. 1982 through 69, the Oakland A's won the World Series. They were a number six seed in the American League. This is how they marched to the World Series. They beat the Twins, the number three seed, three games to one. They beat the number one seed, Cleveland Indians, Four games to zero. America League Championship Series. They beat the number two seed Orioles. Four games to two. And they beat the Dodgers, a number five seed in the National League. Four games to one. This wild card team went 15 and 4 and steamrolled in the postseason like no other stratomatic team has ever steamrolled a postseason that I've been doing this league. And why is this so stunning? Well, 1982 to 69. Would you like to know how the Oakland A's were in that year? Okay, off of baseballreference.com. In 1982, the Oakland A's were 68-94. The next year, 74-88. and The next year, 77-85. and and then in 1969, this was before they built their dynasty in the 70s. They're, they're just getting started here. 69, they didn't make the playoffs. They were 88 and 74. That was their best team. So you're thinking, wow, those two guys from 1969 must have made a big difference for the Oakland A's. The two players for the Oakland A's... The ace of the staff, Blue Moon Odom. Now, he's a quality pitcher. I'm not going to say anything bad about this guy. He's 15-6 and six with a 2.92 ERA, pitched over 200 innings. He's probably one of the top 10 pitchers in the America League. And the other player from the 69 set. Sal Bando, solid fielding third baseman, gets on base, hits for power, not much wrong with his game. 281 with 31 home runs. He, he is an amazing player, an all-star type player, 
but is he really one of the top 10 hitters in this year? Remember, I said Frank Howard, Harmon Killebrew, McCovey, Clemente, Rose. I mean, 69 was loaded. So we're still trying to figure out how in the heck Oakland was able to not only win their division, but to just steamroll through the postseason with what should be an inferior lineup. And we'll get to that next. This is the ending lineup for the 1981-84 A's. So before this season started, they would have Andre Thornton. He'd, he'd stick around. Dower would stick around. Heath would stick around. Blackwell would be gone. They'd lose a catcher. Henderson, Phillips, Burroughs. Drumright would be gone. They'd lose a second baseman. Jackson, Murphy, Fred Stanley would be gone. They'd lose a shortstop. Sal Bando. So they lose a catcher and two infielders. On the pitching, Beckwith, Lankford would stick around. Ossie, Easterly would be gone. McCaddy would stick around. Keo Kruger, Glenn would be gone. So what they would do is they'd leave Lankford in the rotation, move Beckwith and McCaddy to the bullpen. So they need three starting pitchers and two relievers. Well, I can show you right here, because it's easy to do, 12 of the 20 guys, and these are... The 80, 1982 players have since been removed because the season's over. So from 1969, of course, you had Odom and Bando. All right. Rest of the rotation is Mark Langston, who was uh, 1984, pitched for Seattle, but Oakland stole him from the Mariners. Well, that's going to help having a lefty with Blue Moon and Odom at the top of your rotation. They kept Bill Kruger, and he was serviceable as a left-handed starter with a 3861 ERA. Beckwith and McCaddy, well, they'd stay in your bullpen, but there's nothing special about these guys either. McCaddy was good against right-handers. Beckwith was halfway decent. All right, and this is where it gets crazy. So here's one of your catchers, Marv Foley. Well, Marv Foley hit 217. Left-handed catcher who could not throw. He hit for power, had some walks, but yeah. Mike Heath, of course. He was always a good, serviceable catcher. He could throw. He could play a lot of positions. Uh, he could play every day. This is one of his best years. He hit 281. Okay. So he's a decent player. Tony Phillips, one of his early years. He was better in the late 80s with Oakland when they had Tony La Russa as manager. This version of Tony Phillips... He can't really field. He's not that great a base stealer. He hit 248. He worked in a platoon with Rich Dower. Here was a nice pickup to play shortstop. Gary Templeton, who was discarded by the uh, teams nationally, the Cardinals and the Padres, who found no use for him. Oakland could certainly use him. A switch hitting middle infielder with good defense. He's a two at short, beast stealer, handles the bat well. Hits both sides decently. 263. But he's definitely a step above Fred Stanley and whoever Oakland had at shortstop before that. Ricky Henderson. Well, yes, of course. One of his best years. 84. 16 home runs to go with the speed and the batting average. Stolen base and defense. And Dwayne Murphy's probably his last good year because uh, he is great in center field with a minus three arm. Gold glove material. Still hit 256, 33 home runs. So that means there are eight other guys who are on this team who were from the 1982 season who obviously must have meant the difference for the Oakland A's. And we will show you that in this next graph. Unfortunately, the next graph's blurry, but there you go. Rich Dower hit 319 in his 82 card. You see Sal Bando hit 300 with that 69 card. Andre Thornton had a ton of home runs. Reggie Jackson is 82 card with the California Angels. 
They brought in Warren Cromarty, who hit 243. And then as far as the pitching goes, they brought in Raleigh Fingers to be their closer. And Raleigh Fingers had an ERA of 0 0.60. So that says a lot right there. Every late lead on a team that played a lot of close games, Raleigh Fingers closed out. Paul Mirabella, lefty setup guy, ERA of 297. And we talked about Beckwith, Odom, Langston, Langford. The team had a 360 team ERA, and they hit 263. But they went 30, 35, and 20, and won 15 of their last 19, all, all in the playoffs. It was pretty remarkable. But the Oakland A's defied all the odds and put a World Series champion uh, together. And the next step is what's going to happen when they add the 1970 guys. In 1970, Reggie Jackson, his uh, 82, 83, his 1982 card will be replaced with one of these from this card from either 69 or 70. They can get Campanaris to play short. They can get Gene Tennis to catch. Oh, how about Catfish Hunter? They can add Catfish Hunter to that rotation. So the A's suddenly can start building a dynasty starting in 69 and working their way through the 1970s. This has been a remarkable turn. In the previous seasons, the teams in the World Series were pretty close to the teams who were actually in Major League Baseball's World Series. This was the first anomaly. This was the first time a team that um, should have been on the outside looking in snuck into the playoffs and just went on a dominating run. And that's the story of the 82 to 69 Oakland A's. Thank you.